welcome to another video. Today, as you can tell from the title and the thumbnail, I am bringing you my Christmas book haul. So I'm gonna go through all of the new books that I have acquired this festive season, many of which were sent to me by some of you lovely folk, so thank you to those of you I will go through this. And also I have opened some of these in my vlog, so sorry if there's some repetition with the ones from some of you guys. Um, but I have also got a stack from my family over the festive season and a few more friends and I just wanted to accumulate them into one festive book haul. I don't know why it's called a haul at this point because I did not buy any of these myself. They were all gifts because it's Christmas. <laughs> I don't normally do hauls. I don't tend to do them because I don't buy many for myself. Like I never acquire enough books in a small period of time to do a book haul. I think I've done two in the entirety of 2019, um, which is pretty good because one of my goals for 2019 was to not buy as many books. So clearly I succeeded in that. So yeah, a bit unusual for me to do a haul, but festivities and I have a few so yeah let's just stop the babbling and get on with this. Right so one of the first books I acquired this festive season was The Guinevere Deception by Kirsten White and this was ever so kindly sent to me by Ashley from A Frolic Through Fiction. I will link her down below. I will link all the people I mentioned down below if I can find their socials to link them. Um, this is like a female retelling of King Arthur. Sounds good to me. Although is she, is she the wife of King Arthur? Yes. Princess Guinevere has come to Camelot to wed a stranger, the charismatic King Arthur, and it's her story instead. On the back, I hadn't actually seen this before, there was nothing in the world as magical and terrifying as a girl. Like, it sounds really good to me. I'm really intrigued by this. Um, the cover also is absolutely freaking gorgeous and I love the sort of like Camelot vibes and the King Arthur thing. Like that whole tale is something I really like but I don't read much based on it surprisingly because I do genuinely enjoy it. Like as a kid all of the movies and stuff based off that were my favourite. Um, so yeah, really excited for this and thank you so much Ashley for um, sending this my way. The next book I acquired was King of Scars by Leigh Bardugo. You may be aware that me and Becca have been buddy reading all of Leigh Bardugo's Grishaverse in 2019. We kind of failed and after Six of Crows have not got any further, but we will be. Um, but Claire, who will undoubtedly be in the comments somewhere, uh, Little Me 80, 80 something? Little Me 87? 78! God damn it! <laughs> yeah, but Claire, Little Me underscore 78, not 87, who was treating all of her angels of the pages to Christmas gifts, got me King of Scars. Um, I feel like this really needs no explanation. It's Nikolai's spin-off. I don't know any more than that, so I can't give you any more than that, and I don't want to know any more than that. But when we get to it, I will be buddy reading it with Becca because it's in the Grishaverse and that's what we've been doing. So thank you so much, Claire, for this one. I was then spoiled by the dearest Pris. Um, I will link her down below as well. Pris is one of my bestest buddies online. I love Pris so much and she treated me to a few. So we have got... Kingdom of Souls by Rena Barron, The Last Witch Doctor. Um, this is about a witch doctor's daughter who, like, can't do any witch doctory things that she's supposed to do, so I think she starts selling off parts of her soul or something? Um, trade, oh no, trade years from her life for a taste of power, so she starts trading her life for power because she needs to save the city. Yes. Yeah, this is like a really looked down on thing, like no one would stoop that low, but when it's a last resort and she needs to save the city's children, she might just stoop that low because she needs some power. So yeah, this sounds really intriguing to me. Very excited to read it and thank you Pris for sending me this. Also, this cover is one of the most gorgeous things ever. I think it's absolutely beautiful. 
and I'm very excited to read it. I'm gonna say that about all of these though. Next up, Pris sent me Small Spaces by Catherine Arden. Catherine Arden is the author of the Bear in the Nightingale, Girl in the Tower, Winter Night trilogy, which I absolutely adore. I love her writing, I love the atmosphere that she can weave, it's incredible. And I had no idea that she had written a middle grade novel until relatively recently when I was made aware of that and um, needed to get my mitts on that and Pris has sent it my way. Um, from my memory, if it serves me right, this is about a couple of kids who go on a school trip um, but there is a really creepy scarecrow dude and it gets pretty murderous and pretty dark for a middle grade and they need to um, eat the villainous smiling man at his own game. Sounds like it's going to be creepy and Catherine Arden can write an atmosphere so I'm very much looking forward to this one. And finally from Pris she sent me Wild Spark by Vashti Hardy. This one has been on my wish list for a little while. It is a middle grade again which follows a young girl in a town where there are these like mechanical things, machines, animals, machineries, something and the like souls of the people who have passed on are what is used to fuel these machines and our main character is kind of on a mission to get the ghosts. I don't know if they go it doesn't really say. Oh no it does, getting ghost machines, yeah so the ghosts to remember who they are because her brother is one of them and she wants her brother to remember who he was and not be a machine anymore. Um, but you know if she succeeds in getting a ghost machine to remember that it was a person then they could do that for everyone and that could mean complete destruction for their civilization. Um, sounds really good. I am intrigued by this. And again, thank you Bruce. I then got a graphic novel, Skyward, from Bev, Confuzzled Bev. Thank you very much Bev for this one. This is about a world with zero gravity. So the world is a normal place at one point and then boom, no gravity and then follows the story 20 years later from that. And I won't say anything else because I didn't know anything else. I was drawn into this entirely by the artwork. I have read it at this point and did really enjoy it and do recommend. Action packed, I liked it and I really liked the world and the way, like, the way the zero gravity had had an effect on things and how people lived and I just thought it was a really cool concept. I liked it a lot. Um, so yes, thank you so much Bev for this. Very much. I liked it. And then from Jess, who doesn't have a channel anymore, but you know Jess, my friend Jess. <laughs> she got me um, Victoria Schwab's Shade of Magic, The Steel Prince, Knight of Knives. This is volume two in the Steel Prince comics. Um, it's Schwab. That's that. It follows King Maxim before he was king, so Prince Maxim when he was the Steel Prince. Um, and I don't know what happens in this volume because I have not read it, but I love the Darker Shade of Magic world, I love Victoria Schwab, I'm very excited to get into this. Hopefully soon, it's, you know, it's tiny, I'm gonna devour it. I'm excited by this a lot. More, the more Schwab I can digest, the better. So thank you very much, Jess, for this one. I then have a couple of books from the dearest G, and she sent me The Adventure Zone by... Clint McElroy, Griffin McElroy, Justin McElroy, Travis McElroy, and Carrie Peach? Peach? I don't know how to pronounce that, I am very sorry. Um, but this is a graphic novel based on a podcast that is based on a D&D &D campaign, I think. So these brothers, they're all brothers or fathers, sons, brothers, whatever, this family did a D&D &D campaign on a podcast, I think, and then turned it into a graphic novel. Is that right? <laughs> based on the podcast! Yes, it is based on the Codpast. Cod cod really? Really, Jade? <laughs> based on the podcast. But yeah, D&D &D is fun. This sounds funny. I'm really into it. I know G has read it as well. Um, and if she still send it to me after she's read it, that can only mean good things for me. So yeah, I'm really excited about this. And then she also sent me 
The Queens of Innerslayer by Tessa Grattan. I have heard that this is a real slow paced political fantasy. It's a brick but I'm really intrigued and really want to read it. I don't know if I'm gonna like it but it just sounds good. It's about these three queens um, or princesses I suppose at this time. Their father is determining which princess he will give the kingdom to. Oh yeah, and there is this like magical plague over the kingdom and the daughters don't want to leave the fate of their kingdom to their father's decision so they are preparing the kingdom etc. Sounds good! I have heard as I say that it's really slow paced and political but I am intrigued by this deeply and G was aware of this hence why she sent it my way so thank you so much G. You know I love you. And that is all of the books that I received from my pals, so thank you, pals. Um, at least they're all the ones I received in the festive season. Um, thank you to anyone who sends me anything, seriously, you do not ever have to, but I do appreciate it so much, so thank you for that. Um, but yeah, I will link all of the people that I can from that stack down below whether it be Twitters or Instagrams or whatever, they'll be down there somewhere. But I will now go into my family stack. So this stack of books was gifted to me by my mum, Jake's mum, and a couple of my nans. Um, so yeah, my mum got me The Night Circus. Um, this is a book that I have read and loved. This is the special edition Waterstones hardback blue sprayed edges absolutely gorgeous book. My paperback copy is in shreds and she knew I wanted the special edition so here it is. This story, if you are unfamiliar, is about a circus that only appears by night and two magicians who are in some sort of duel to outdo each other. It's weird, it's whimsical, it is quite slow placed and quite romantic and quite atmospheric and flouncy. I don't know how to describe it. A lot of people don't like this. A lot of people do. It seems to have divided opinions. I adore it. The atmosphere for me is just incredible. I love this and now I have the pretty special edition to replace my very tatty old one. So there's that. I then acquired the Queen of Nothing by Holly Black. This is the third book in the Folk of the Air trilogy, The Cruel Prince, The Wicked King, and then The Queen of Nothing. I have read The Cruel Prince, I have not yet read The Wicked King, but this is the third book in the series. It's kind of scarily small. I'm not sure how I feel about the conclusion to a series being this tiny, um, but I'm looking forward to reading the rest of this trilogy hopefully in 2020 because everyone's super hyped about this and I have it. I have no excuse. I can read The Wicked King and The Queen of Nothing and be done with it. Um, I liked The Cruel Prince though so I don't know why I've waited so long on The Wicked King. Not sure about that. But yeah, now I have Queen of Nothing. The next book that I acquired is The Ten Thousand Doors of January by Alex Harrow. I don't know too much about this other than a book within a book whimsical sort of vibes and that's good enough for me. Um, I think our main character is called January and she finds a book full of like these bizarre tales and stories, stories of doors, something about doors, stories of doors, stories of love, stories of magic and each of the stories is somehow intertwined with her own life. I, I'm really not sure of anything more than that. Just reading the bit on the back here. According to January Scholar, assuming that's her name, there's only one way to run away from your own story and that's to sneak into someone else's. I'm intrigued by this. I've heard some really good things about it but not from the masses. I haven't heard of many people reading this but I'm super excited for it. A book within a book just sounds magical and I'm excited about it so yeah can't wait to dive into this one as well and isn't it just like one of the most beautiful things you have ever seen. <laughs> I then got Explorers on Black Ice Bridge by Alex Bell. 
this is the third book in the Polar Bear Explorers Club trilogy. I have read the Polar Bear Explorers Club, I have not yet read Explorers on Witch Mountain and this is the third and final book in that series. I hope to do so in February because, you know, Polarthon is coming up. But yeah, super excited about this. The Polar Bear Explorers Club is one of my favourite model grades ever, love it, can't wait to finish the series. Um, the first one follows Stella Starflake Pearl who is a girl who wants to join the Polar Bear Explorers Club which is totally unheard of because not for ladies but she manages to work her way into that and ends up on this wild adventure full of all sorts of crazy creatures including some carnivorous cabbages, yes you heard that correctly, um, and it's a beautiful tale of friendship and just this snowy adventure arctic atmosphere i love it so much um yeah can't wait to carry on with that and read this conclusion i then got the way past winter by kieran hargrave hargrave i think that says um this is one that i've had my eye on for a little while and hadn't got it is a middle grade about a girl who i think everyone, like all the children in her village are going missing and then she has to team up with this one boy who's a magician? He's a mage, a boy mage called Rune. So um, Mila wakes to find her brother Oscar has gone. A dark clue suggests he's followed a stranger who visited them in the night. She learns that all boys in the village have vanished except one, the boy mage called Rune. Together Mila and Rune set out to find them in an extraordinary journey across the snowy mountains to the furthest corner of the frozen north. So immediately I'm drawn to this because polar fantasy that sounds slightly whimsical and magical and a middle grade about a couple of kids teaming up to save the day as well. Like, I'm really excited by this and also look at those sprayed edges, like that stencil of the little animals. Love it. This is just a beautiful book and sounds right up my street. So I'm very excited about this one as well. I then got this one, which is The Pearl in the Ice by Catherine Constable. I don't know much about this at all, other than Polar Fantasy, written by Catherine Constable. Catherine Constable wrote The Wolf Princess, which I read a couple of years ago, and liked but didn't love. But I liked her writing, so I'm intrigued by this one, um, but I don't know much about it. She watched the whales alone and as she stood on the deck she fancied she could send some part of herself down into the water and hear in the echoing calving of the sea something astonishing. That sounds quite whimsical. Twelve-year-old Marina feels an irresistible pull to the sea despite the strict wishes of her father, a naval commander who's kept her away from the water all her life. When she's sent to a boarding school, Marina instead stows away on her father's ship. Unbeknown to her, it's the eve of a war and she's embarked on a stormy voyage through the icy seas to where a great secret lies in wait. So yes, that's that. It's beautiful. I'm intrigued by this. Perhaps not so polar fantasy, but like icy waters, cold vibes, and um, knowing what Catherine Constable's other book was and the way that was written, like I'm, I'm feeling it for some reason. Um, yeah excited. I will report back to you when I have read this on my thoughts because this is one that I'm a bit... it's curiosity more than excitement on this one because of the author, basically. I then got The Shadows of Winterspell by Amy Wilson. This one is, for one, absolutely gorgeous, two, polar fantasy. Um, this is about a young girl who is trapped in the Winterspell Forest. Um, Stella's been living behind the magic of Winterspell Forest for most of her life. Lonely, she enrolls at the local school, but as she begins to make friends, discovers that she is at the heart of a fey legend that could change everything. As autumn turns to magical winter, Stella realises that confronting her own family secret is the only way to release the forest from the shadowy grip of dark and bitter magic. Very very interested in this one. Sounds right up my street. Super excited. May potentially be perfect for Polarthon as well. Next up I have Never Tell by Catherine Orton. This one sounds so whimsical and brave and beautiful. So this follows a couple of kids who escape a prison camp 
11 year old Lena has never seen the world beyond the prison camp until the night she escapes with her best friend Bogdan um, and then they continue away from the prison camp journeying across the harsh Russian snowy landscapes and they are pursued by a sorceress and her pack of shadow wolves? A vengeful sorceress and her pack of shadow wolves. The children will need every ounce of bravery and a little sorcery of their own if they are to survive. This sounds incredible. The cover gives me all sorts of magical wintry vibes. It just sounds way up my street, so I'm super excited for this one as well. And again, could potentially be perfect for Polathon. In fact, I think this little haul here, like this little Christmas haul, could end up being my Polathon TBR because like they are all perfect for it. My family know me so well. And then finally, a book that I have wanted to read for so long but just never have is Earthsea. So this is the first four books in the Earthsea series by Ursula K. Le Guin? Le Guin? I don't know. But this is like a classic fantasy, the tales from Earthsea, um, which is the Wizard of Earthsea, the Tombs of Atuan, the Farthest Shore, and Tehuan? I don't know what these words are supposed to sound like. But this is just fantasy. Wizards, dragons, adventures, classic. I have had so many people ask me if I have read this. I have not. I didn't own it until now. But I'm so excited for this. <laughs> like, I've heard so many fantastic things about it. Yeah. The first four books. Here. Yeah. <laughs> Very very excited. Oh. And there we have it. That is my Christmas book haul. I've just stacked them up. It's quite tall. Um, but yeah, that is that. Again, thank you to everyone who has sent me something. Thank you to my mum, Jake's mum, and my nans. Not that any of them will be watching, but thank you to my family as well for those books. And I'm, I'm just super excited. I now need to scan all of these into my Goodreads because I'm trying to be good with my like Goodreads shelf organisation lately. So I'm going to scan all these into Goodreads. There we go. Amazing. I have had such a fantastic Christmas. I have been spoiled. Aside from the books, I was spoiled otherwise as well. I am not sure if this is going up before my vlog, but I got, I got a cart. You can't really see it properly. I have a cart. Nothing in it yet, because I'm about to organise that as well for the vlog that will maybe go up after this, before this, I'm not sure. But yeah, and I got a little library sign as well, which Jake is gonna hang on the door of the library for me. Isn't he sweet? And all sorts of other goodies are, I'm just so grateful. Um, and I hope you've all had a fantastic festive season. Of course, the Christmas season is now over, but that does mean we're heading into the new year and all of the new year goodness so be prepared for all of my typical end of year beginning of year videos we will have the 2019 in review 2020 goals best and worst of the year and this year I think I actually also have an anticipated releases list that never happens but a lot of my favorite authors have books coming out in 2020 and I'm very excited about that um so yeah I'm gonna stop rambling now because I I'm just keep keep going on so sorry um but yes, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Sorry if it's been ridiculously long. Chat to me down below. Let me know if you're equally as excited about any of these books as I am and which ones I should prioritise getting to. Um, but yeah, that's that. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!